Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Veterans Day morning with this mountain weather update. A couple of live cameras here because this is our next storm system. This is Revelstoke up in interior BC, and I've got an extended period of heavy snow potential uh, all the way through the 14th for a lot of interior BC. So I love seeing this, but that is snow coming down right now just getting started up there. All right, let's go to the other side. This is uh, Whistler, Black Home. Snow at the higher elevations, above 4,000 feet. It's, it's mainly rain down at the very lowest of elevations, but I love seeing this too. Uh, so snow up at Whistler in the Black Home in uh, parts of the coastal range. And here's radar so you can put it all together. You can see the snow up there in BC, the wave hitting the interior, snow through Washington, Oregon, the high cascades, the volcanoes. And it's even going as far south now as Shasta, and this is going to run through Tahoe as well on its way through. So this is all part of our next storm system, sending out this front of moisture. And that's going to race down into the interior um, later today into 11-12 and early 11-13. But I'll tell you, it's going to be moving really fast. So I don't expect huge accumulations through the interior. It's probably going to be light in many places. Let me set the table. Here is the water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft, your moisture is in the whites and the blues. Key area of low pressure here and also right here. Both have a lot of jet support, so there's atmospheric support for both of these all the way up through the layers. It's sending out this front into the Pacific Northwest. That's what's producing that, that snowfall this morning, and it's what will race through the interior later today and into tomorrow through Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. But again, it's going to be moving very fast. Now, one of the differences between this morning's update and yesterday is now it looks like we have two different pieces of southern track energy that will race down through and then develop into areas of low pressure around the four corners. And both could deliver heavy snow potential to parts of the four corners, New Mexico, Colorado. So pretty interesting. And in some total, when I look at my bullet points this morning, there are four different weather makers. So we've got the cold front today, tomorrow, early 11-13. Storm system then 11-13 through 11-16, followed by two separate pieces of energy that dive into the southern tier and develop into like four-corner Albuquerque lows. And those then track up through with heavy snow potential. So again, four different pieces. Here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe. And I now want to include interior BC because I think things look really good. And I've got a lot of folks up there that uh, watch this. I know in interior BC. And I think we're in for heavy snow potential, 11-11 through 11-14. Um, and then again, on 11-17 and 11-18, I like what I'm seeing. So good stuff there. Um, another example, what about the, the Wasatch? So light snow accumulations on 1112, uh, light again 1115, 1116, and then moderate accumulations on 1118 and 1119. Okay, let me take you into Colorado and do a little bit of analysis here. This is snow mass ski area, the time height. You're looking at a humidity forecast for all the vertical layers of the atmosphere, a slice. And this is, you can see the timeline at the bottom. Read it from right to left. It's for the next 72 to 80 hours. It's mainly dry today. Now tomorrow, things start to change in the afternoon. You see the green, the little green pocket of higher humidity values. It's, it's slim, it's fast, but it's there. And so between tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and very early on the 13th, we'll have some snowfall across the Elks, across Aspen, across Snowmass, across Buttermilk um, in the Highlands. But I'm not expecting a lot. Here is the snow forecast, and I, I happen to agree with this. And This is indicating that snow tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, early 11, early 11, 13, to about the tune of three inches, about three inches for snow mass ski area high up. That's probably going to be the case, one to four inches, Aspen, snow mass, buttermilk in the highlands. In fact, that's really going to be the case for a lot of resorts in Colorado. Again, a fast front doesn't have a whole lot of juice with it. Here's the latest uh, jet stream forecast by close of business today. And you can see the next, the next dip in the jet. That's our front coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Moves into the interior through 1112, and then it's out of here by 1113. And then we wait on the next storm system. And here it comes. Pacific Northwest dives all the way down through the Sierra. And then watch what happens. The southern end of that gets cut off on 1117 over the four corners. And then that develops into a storm system over New Mexico and Colorado. That's not it. Here comes the next one right there, 1118, 1119, 1120. 
uh, right on its coattails, another storm system develops into uh, what could be a pretty sizable snow event, and it moves on through. Okay, let me take you over to uh, the forecast radar and satellite. So here we are by 5.30 this afternoon. Everything's coming out of the Pacific Northwest, and now it is brushing Tahoe uh, with some snowfall. This is that cold front races down. By tomorrow morning, it's right on the doorstep of the Wasatch Tetons, not into Colorado until the afternoon. And there it is. So by 11, 12 afternoon, snow in the western slope of Colorado, still some leftover snow in Wyoming and over the Wasatch and the High Uintas. And then it moves out, some, some very light additional snow, early 11, 13, then it's gone. Then you refocus, big storm for the Pacific Northwest in BC. That hits the Sierra briefly on its way through to the northern tier. Here comes that separate piece of energy. Look, another hit to, this, to the Sierra. And then watch what happens with this. Some of that energy goes into the interior, but it's almost like magic. Here comes that low out of the south through the four corners. That uh, area of low pressure is developing, spins up, and rolls through New Mexico and Colorado with some moderate to heavy snow accumulations. And then right on its heels, here comes that other southern track low through the four corners, and that one's got a lot of snow. This is the, the 20th in the morning, and by the afternoon, it's cruising up, taking the turn up through Colorado and Wyoming. So we could be seeing quite a bit of snowfall out of this pattern. Here are my latest numbers. So all of today through tomorrow, it's mainly light for the lower 48. One to four in Colorado, one to four over the Wasatch, one to four over the Tetons, Big Sky, Northwest Montana, Idaho, and one to four of the Sierra. You want the big numbers, you got to go up to uh, parts of BC in the Pacific Northwest. Second time period. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. There are three different storm systems during this time frame, 1113 to 1120. So anywhere in purple is over a foot. Now what you're seeing up in BC, the numbers remaining big. The last couple of days, they look big. They look big this morning. Anywhere from one, two, maybe even three feet of total snow accumulation. Uh, from the coastal range all the way through interior BC, less down in Banff. Uh, quite a bit of snow for the Pacific Northwest, up around uh, Washington, Oregon, the High Cascades and the volcanoes, looking at potentially three feet over Baker, three to four feet over Rainier. Um, Stevens Pass could see one to two feet, and you can see the numbers all the way down through Mount Ashland and to Shasta, a foot or more. Uh, potentially eight to 12 over the top of the, uh, of the Tahoe area down to Mammoth. In parts of Wyoming and Utah, five to 10 inches for the Tetons and Big Sky, probably five to eight, five to 10 over the Wasatch, potentially a foot down over Brian Head simply because of the Southern Track storm systems. Now in Colorado and Northern New Mexico, really benefiting from those two Southern Track areas of low pressure that spin up, we could be looking at a foot or more over parts of the San Juan, San Grays, Northern parts of, uh, of New Mexico in the front range high peaks of Colorado. We could be looking at a foot or more. And everybody else is within that four to maybe eight inch range if you're uh, over the, uh, the western slope or I-70 and northern mountains. So pretty interesting setup right there. Again, with four different weather pieces to this puzzle this time around, um, it's going to keep the snow chances high for quite some time. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it on this Monday morning. Take care and have a great day.